actually do our titration. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff here in front of us. Uh, the first thing we've got is the burette set up. And the first thing that I want to do is take my titrant solution, which is what we just made, the sodium hydroxide and deionized water. I transferred it into an appropriately labeled uh, container. Then I want to make sure my stop cock is closed. And I'm going to rinse my burette, making sure I get all of it. It's been cleaned already, but I wanted to rinse it with the solution. And one thing I forgot was my waste speaker. Got my waste speaker. And I'm rinsing. Now, this, the purpose of this is to get any uh, solubles out of there if we had any soap left over inside the burette because burettes are so difficult to clean. We want to remove as many contaminants as we possibly can. We want to just close that and then rinse it on the way out, rotating it slowly, getting all the contaminants out that we can. several times I'll put plenty of it in there. We'll need to record that initial volume momentarily. Let's see what else do we need to do. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take the titrant solvent, which we can use several different things when making biodiesel. 50-50 uh, commercial grade isopropyl alcohol and toluene or uh, there are several other things. What we'll be using is actual methanol which is highly flammable and it has a very high health rating, so it's not something to be messed with. I've got a volumetric pipette, which I'm going to draw 10 milliliters of methanol. Make sure my eyes are level. Read from the bottom of the meniscus. And we've got that. Our 10 milliliters of methanol. Close that up. This is flammable. And we're going to take one milliliter of oil. Now, one of the, there are several things that uh, make biodiesel uh, a green product. It's recycling for one, and that's what we're going to test. Uh, with new advances in diesel, diesel can burn more cleanly than it could before. But uh, we've got lots of different oils here we can test. I've got some peanut oil. I've got some canola oil. I've got some mystery oil. And this one is canola oil that, that chicken was fried in. There's also soybean oil. We're going to take from the supernate because there's a lot of crud in the bottom. And I'm going to pull up exactly one milliliter of the oil and put in our solution. So we want to mix this up really well to get the oil dissolved inside that methanol. The last thing we need in order to get a good titration is a pH indicator. We're looking for a pH here of about eight to nine and so the appropriate indicator for this is phenothaline. So we're going to use a phenothaline solution 1%. Again, making sure we know the health and hazard levels for any chemical that we're working with. All we need, so I'm going to take just a few drops. One, two, three, four, four. Our solution is clear. It's kind of cloudy, but it's a clearish color. Now, if we were to take that same phenothaline and put it inside this titrant solution, it would turn pink instantly because it turns pink in a base. So 
and we're going to need to figure out what volume of base it requires to neutralize this particular acid. And I'll try to get a better camera angle on that for you when we come back. All right, so now what we're going to do is actually do our titration. Step one, we've already set up our apparatus, we're ready to go. We need to record our initial volume. And the first thing you need to do when recording a volume for a burette is figure out which direction your burette is reading. And this one is reading from top to bottom, which is pretty standard, but I have seen some oddballs. And each mark is one milliliter and each smaller mark is one to a tenth of a milliliter. So this one is at 23.123. 23.3 milliliters is our initial volume. Then what we're going to do is wait for our color turn by uh, dripping sodium hydroxide in. It'll be hard for you guys to see, but what I see is a pink color every time that sodium hydroxide goes in there. So you see the pink color? As I swirl it, the pink color begins to disappear. That one stayed, so we are at about 24.2. So it was about a milliliter to get... 4.2. So we have 0.9 milliliters this is our volume for uh, neutralization. You can see that it's pretty pink and it's staying pink. You want it to be just a smidge pink. So as soon as it turns, you're ready to be done.